Welcome back. Behind me is my 2004 Subaru Forester that I've built for all my adventures. Today we're going to be talking about something a little controversial. Overlanding versus off-roading. If you've been around for the channel for a while, you know I call this Forester both an off-road and an overland build, which can be confusing. So that's why today we're going to take a deep dive into what is off-roading and what is overlanding from my personal perspective. But before you go ahead and dive into what both of those mean, let's first talk about one thing. Neither of these terms are exclusive, so you can go ahead and build an overlanding rig, or you can go ahead and build an off-road rig, or you can build one of each, or you can build one that does both of them, such as my Forester. And now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about what these terms really mean, especially here on my channel. First, let's talk about the term overlanding. The term overlanding is actually a very broad term that we've kind of adopted in the automotive culture. By definition, it just means traveling a long distance over land being self-reliant. And for a lot of us, that means exactly what we do in our cars as we explore these beautiful places. But for other people, that could mean traveling by horse, by bicycle, or even by foot or motorcycle. So overlanding is a very general term that we've very much adopted in the automotive scene, but it does cover a wide range of different activities, which I think is something to keep in mind when we're talking about overlanding. For me, overlanding is about traveling over a large amount of distance over a longer time. So this means no day trips. I don't consider overlanding a day trip. I consider overlanding more than a day trip. And that's why, well, I have the rooftop tent on this build. And for me, that means going through remote locations. And that really emphasized being self-reliant, right? You're exploring these places where you probably 100% don't have cell service, probably don't have power. You probably won't have food or water for the next couple days. And the next civilization might be 500 kilometers away. That is real overlanding to me. And you've seen me do it on this channel. We've done lots of adventures where we went into BC and explored some beautiful places. Places that not a lot of people get to see because they're in remote locations. Take a look at our BC trip when we did this when the Forester was almost stuck and it didn't even have these tires on yet. We went ahead and we were in the middle of BC where the only gas pump was literally a hand crank gas pump. The, the tended hand to pump. And that was the only gas pump I think for... It was over 200 kilometers. We had jerry cans and we also had that and we had to plan our trip accordingly. Overlanding does require a lot of planning because you're in these remote locations and you have to be reliant. That also means that you have to be careful of how you build your vehicle because your vehicle is gonna have to last. Another example of this where it's not as remote but I would still consider it overlanding is my trip to and from the British Columbia coast this summer. We took the main highways a lot of times because we were traveling those long distances, but we still had to find places to sleep for the night. We still had to bring our own food. We still had to bring our own water. And it still embraced that like traveling long distances over extended amount of times that really defines overlanding for me. And with that being said, what makes an overlanding build for me? One of the biggest things is figuring out your sleeping solution, whether it's a rooftop tent, maybe a bed in the back, or even a ground tent. It's something you have to think about when you're overlanding and maybe not off-roading, right? We want to make sure that we have adequate sleeping places, we have adequate warmth, we have all that stuff that goes into planning our nighttime activities during these longer trips. Another thing you want to consider is your food and water, especially if you're going to be in the backcountry for a long amount of time, like in this car. I have water storage. If I was doing a pure off-road build, I probably wouldn't have 50 gallons of water I could add into this or 25 gallons of water I could add into this. Um, and also with the fridge, right? Making sure that we're able to store our food, we're able to keep our food over a longer amount of times. These are things that define an overland build for me. And lastly, it's again about that self-reliance and being sustainable. You wanna make sure that you have everything you need for those longer trips. For me in particular, that also means that I need to figure out my power and my battery charging and my storage setup. So make sure that I am able to access everything I need, especially when I'm filming videos for you guys, I need to make sure that I have power, whether that be some solar panels, whether that be generating as we drive along or bigger batteries. These are all things you gotta think about when you're overlanding and building an overland rig. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the other side. Let's go ahead and take a off-roading. Again, I'm gonna start with the definition because I think it gives us a good basis to go ahead and kind of start our discussion from. Off-roading really looks at the surface you're traveling on. Well, overlanding, you might be on roads, you might be on logging roads, you might be on other things. Off-roading really looks at the more rugged terrains. It looks at rocks, rock crawling, mudding, that kind of things, where you're going ahead and you're really pushing your vehicle to the limits. 
So for me, off-roading really means taking on those harder and technical trails where it really pushes both your vehicle and your driving ability. You're going much, much slower off-roading. You might be making it only another 50 meters in the next hour because you're winching and so forth. Where overlanding, it's more about, as I said, traveling those long distances. When you're going up those logging roads, I would consider that overlanding. But as soon as you hit those side trails that aren't really marked on, well, your GPS, I'm gonna consider that off-roading. That also means when you're doing overlanding trips, you could be doing some off-roading in there. Some good examples of this, again, are my two BC trips where we went ahead, took this car to the glacier, and also drove through central BC. Both of those, we did overland. It was multiple days where I slept on the rooftop tent, cooked our food, we did all that. But in the day, we did off-roading because we were focused on pushing our cars to the absolute limit. Taking our car, well, this car particularly, up to the glacier. That was something that wasn't done before as far as we know. So we really pushed the limits of this car and what it was capable of. I would consider that off-roading. Another thing about off-roading is I find off-roading will be more mentally draining. You really have to focus and you really have to drive your car and be a good driver to go ahead and do really good technical trails and will do off-roading in your vehicle. Because if you do make a lapse in decision or you do something wrong, a lot of times when you're off-roading, you're gonna break something in the car. Or at least you're gonna be using your winch to get out of it. And speaking of having to use a winch, another couple good examples of what off-roading means to me and some examples you'd see on my channel are when we went ahead and did Quirk Ridge, Top of the World, and stuff like that. Those were really pushing my car to the absolute limits and stuff like West Fisher, where we originally had to do the winch and then as I got a better driver, I actually went ahead and drove it drove over the obstacles themselves. A lot of times off-roading will pose some very difficult obstacles that you have to both mentally and physically prepare to go over them. And well, for an off-road build in particular, there are some main things you're gonna be focusing on that will obviously be also something you look at for overlanding, but you will probably want to go a little bit more extreme when you're building the off-road rig. The first one is, well, a lift. You're gonna to try to get as much ground clearance as you can out of your car. Here with the coilovers, I didn't push these coilovers to the two and a half to three inch mark where if I was building a full off-road rig, I probably would. I'd be breaking a lot more axles, which would not be good for my overlanding adventures. Another thing as well, you'd be putting on some big skid plates. What I've done is I decided to compromise on my skid plates originally building this and I went ahead and actually completely destroyed one of my skid plates. So again, that is kind of balancing between the off-road and the overland build. There is some decisions you have to make to decide whether you're going to go all out in just a full off-road rig, or you're gonna go ahead and make some compromises to make sure you have reliancy and self-sufficiency on the road, especially over the long distances on your overland journeys. And then finally, tires is a great one to kind of differentiate the difference between an off-road and an overland rig. Overland, you're gonna want something that is reasonable in the road. You're gonna want something that doesn't completely scream when you're driving down the highway. And you're probably not gonna to wanna to put the biggest tire ever because it's gonna dramatically decrease your fuel economy. A good example on this car is if I wanna do a full off-road rig, maybe I'd try to slam some 40 mud trains on here. They would scream on the road and they would be horrible for fuel economy, but they'd be great off-road and in some tricky situations. But I wanna make sure that this car was also a good car to do my overlanding adventures as I drive through BC. So I went with something more timid. I went with an all-terrain that had snowflake rating and something that wasn't completely oversized and overkill for this car. So yes, you can do off-road adventures in your overlanding trips, just like I was saying before, we've done many of those in the Forester. And while these do have some differences, these two terms, overlanding and off-roading, do have a lot of similarities too. Both, in essence, are embracing the spirit of adventure and about getting out to the great outdoors and doing some exploration. Whether they are over multi-days or whether it's a single day trip, in essence, they're just both about exploring this wonderful place we live in. And that's not all. Both of these have amazing communities. And well, both of these communities kind of coexist together, particularly in the Subaru world, where people that lift their cars for overlanding, lift their cars for off-roading, they both kind of exist in the same sphere. Some of the people, as I said, for the off-roading cars are really pushing the limits, putting 33s on Foresters and so forth. And other people are looking at how they can optimize their back storage. And like I said, these two communities do exist together. There is some differences between them as we discussed. Overlanding is all about self-reliance and traveling well greater distances over a greater amount of time. And off-roading is really about pushing the limits and seeing what your car is capable of in shorter, more technical trails. I hope this video helped define both overlanding and off-roading for you and help clarify what's the difference between the two. 
I also hope if you're building a rig, maybe this helps you kind of decide on what parts you decide to put on and where you decide to go. With that being said, I know this might be a little bit of a controversial video because particularly the word overlandy, not everyone's a fan of it. So let me know down below what you think of these two terms and what you would do differently. And one quick thing before we go, don't forget to check out the channel memberships to support my adventure through all of this. And speaking of adventures, I will see you guys in the next adventure.